and welcome uh, everybody to the uh, to the trading psychology webinar tonight. I'm sitting here in London um, with my head of markets, uh, James Hellerell, next to me. So whenever I get uh, you know a little distracted, a little boring, then uh, James will uh, jump in. Uh, please ask as many questions as you want. That's the whole idea. It's gonna this webinar is gonna last about an hour. And if all I do is have to listen to myself, I'm going to get extremely bored. So please, uh, any, any question uh, you have, uh, send it to me. Uh, there's, there's a lot and lot, lot of people on here tonight. So unlikely that all the questions will be answered. Um, I think we, we stick to about an hour in total. That'd be good. Um, so I will do my best to to uh, to make it entertaining and, and it'd be good to, to, to get the feedback. So whenever you have questions, you send it to me. And if I can, then uh, I'll answer it immediately. Um, and if not, um, either later today or you know just email me and uh, I'll, I'll do my best. So first of all, I have to uh, do a disclaimer. So we're going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight. Don't immediately go out there and, and start trading everything I say or do the opposite of everything I say. Uh, neither of those. Uh, this is educational, uh, an educational session. This is not meant to be. Uh, although although we, we will be using actual markets, live markets. Um, don't go out there and, and, and trade based on, on, on what you hear today. Okay, this is who I am. Uh, a lot of you might know me. Um, for those who don't, um, I've been trading for the last uh, 20 plus years. I started at, at Goldman Sachs as a, as a market maker. I was flow trading, so I had clients on the other side and I had to make markets. And even if I didn't want to make markets, I still had to make markets. If the client was a seller, I had to be a buyer, um, even if I didn't want to. Um, then after that, I moved on to a, a big hedge fund uh, called GLG, where I uh, was a hedge fund manager, uh, ran a lot of client money. So at Goldman's, I ran money for the bank, uh, which is a lot easier than, than working for a hedge fund. You know, at the hedge fund, you, you get uh, judged internally and externally um, every day um, based on your own skills, and you don't have a big organization around you making your life a lot easier. So a lot of people might know me from uh, the BBC. I uh, came up with this idea to, to make a program showing uh, the psychology and the ability of ordinary people, uh, people who didn't have the privileged backgrounds of, of many people in the city. And I tried to show um, that actually, you know what? There's, there's a lot of smart people out there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important to take uh, care of your own financial future. And, and hopefully this program showed that, you know, people can do a lot more than uh, often is, uh, is portrayed. So currently I'm still at uh, a hedge fund and I also started a uh, trading academy. And this webinar is uh, based, uh, is, is meant to talk a little bit about the trading academy, about what we do. Um, and it's uh, especially going to look at uh, trading psychology. It's obviously is a super interesting, um, and for all the sleepless nights I've had through my 20 years trading, all the pain I've suffered. Uh, hopefully, if I share some of this with uh, with you guys, and 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 it becomes clear that everybody is going through the same. Uh, we all humans. We all go through the same processes, through the same uh, developments. Um, so, so that's what we're going to talk about today as well. So, within the uh, academy. There is, uh, I, I look at stocks, I look at currencies, I look at commodities. Uh, so there's courses about that. There's also a course about technical trading strategies. So I look at this from many different perspectives. And it's all together in what is called the Million Dollar Traders course. It's very similar to the program that uh, people in, on, on the TV went through. And they outperformed the experts. So hopefully people who go through this program are very much prepared for, the, um, for, for, the, for their, their, their future in trading. The problem with a lot of courses out there is that they are not being taught by the right people, the right material. It's all old stuff. It's just like trying to 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 push it down people's throats. And it's not about the the end consumer, the end uh, trader, but it's about uh, making money for 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 the educator. And for me, it's different. I'm just interested in, in in sharing what I know. We also have a trading club which talks about what's going on in the market right now. And uh, there's, there's, there's weekly memberships and quarterly, monthly, whatever. Um, we, we'll talk about it later. And it might, it might be suitable for you, it might not. It, it's uh, whatever works for you. So we're going to um, – everything I do is, is, is backed by 
what is called the five-step trading process. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in, in, in a second. But first, we're going to do uh, two polls. Um, James is going to put them on the screen, the first one, just to have an idea about the uh, audience. So let's begin, guys, with uh, the number of you who have traded previously uh, with real money, um, whether it's currently or may have uh, may now have ceased. So um, if you'd like to vote, we can see the results coming through. So it's great to see so many people who are applying their experience to the markets. It's a very good way to learn to have that active uh, participation, but also good to see so many people who are new um, and are taking the uh, the right approach. So we'll uh, cut things out. That was uh, that was great, guys. So thanks. And one other quick one, if we can. So what what was the result? Uh... It was overwhelming in favour of yes and currently trading. Um, okay. So the best part of seventy percent with around fifteen percent beginners. Okay, fine. Okay, and then there was another poll, I think, on the yeah. So this time the million dollar traders uh, series. So how many of you saw the TV series? Okay, so again, uh, overwhelming majority uh, have seen it, which is really good to uh, to know. Over two thirds of you uh, in the room. So uh, again, guys, thanks for participating. I can see uh, all but four people have actually voted there. So uh, so thank you for engaging with it. That's great to see. Okay. Okay. So the the way I look at trading. Is that you need? Um, there you go. The, the way I look at trading is that you need to have a process. If you just come in every day and you just look at the market and you say, well, "Okay, I, you know, am I bullish? Am I bearish? You know, what's an interesting stock to look at today?" It's not going to really work over time, and definitely nobody else would give you uh, their money to manage. So the, the right way of doing it, and, and this comes back in, in 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 everything I look at, comes back in commodities, comes back in currencies, in stocks. You need to have a what I call five-step trading process, and none of this is is is, is unique in, in in itself. But the combination and and the um, the ability to go through each step whenever you trade is really really difficult. And I tell you that there's very few professionals who are able to do this. And I myself also struggle to always go through each of these steps because sometimes you're really keen on doing a trade. And you feel like, okay, it's, it's now or never. I, I want to pull that, tra that trigger. But if you haven't gone through this, chances are that, for example, you're in a trade that a lot of people already have or that has already run its, 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 um, its way. So let's go into each, of these, um, into each of these steps. And again, I've developed this way of training over the last 20 years. And I think if, if people use this, use this, it will really help them. So when I talk, uh, the first step is idea generation. You need to make sure that you have an idea that not everybody else has at the same time because you're going to have a consensus position. You're going to all be in the same idea. And, um, you know, if, if you're a long, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you bought a stock, you need someone else to buy it after you. Obviously, otherwise it doesn't go up. So if, already, if everybody already has bought it, it's not going to work. So there's two ways of, of doing this, basically. It's either top-down, uh, thematic, or it's bottom-up. And when I talk about... Thematic, I'm thinking of stuff like, at the moment, um, the Greece theme, that can be a theme. Uh, it can be uh, China slowing down. It can be the, uh, the end of the rate cuts in, in, in globally and, and you know, the start of a rate uh, hike cycle. It can be the oil price, the chill, uh, chill gas coming on online. It can be disruptive technologies. It can be shortage of water around the world. It can be, can be a million different themes. Um, so that's the top down of, of looking at stuff. You can also look at it uh, from a bottom up, trying to find a good stock, for example. So let's look at um, one idea. For example, if you look at uh, China slowing, you can look at the price of iron ore. You can, um, you can, you can look at uh, the Aussie dollar. You can look at the electricity demand in China. Um, you could look at the GDP in Singapore. So there's lots of different things you can look at uh, to see what's going on, um, to, to confirm a theme um, and to have a think about what trade might be interesting. So, for example, if you think China is slowing and you believe that uh, rates are going down, 
then maybe there's going to be such an enormous amount of quantitative easing in China that you just buy the stock market. And that's exactly what is happening now. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail uh, later. So that's top down. Another way of looking at this bottom up. Look at Amazon. Today they had um, the, the Amazon Prime Day, but they apparently sell more uh, than on Black Friday. So every, whatever, every 10 minutes they had another deal. And a lot of people have talked about uh, Amazon being, uh, never being profitable. But you know what? I, I use it almost every day. I have a package delivered to the office. But again, something else that you know, was just so easy to buy. Don't have to go to the shop. And if you, if you invest on that basis, um, you can do really well. And that's actually the same as, as Emil did in, in Million Dollar Traders. He bought what he uh, was wearing. So he liked wearing Nike. So he uh, bought Nike. And then there was stuff that he didn't like, and he shorted it. And he was saying, well, actually, you know what? It's really amazing how that works. And that's the way Warren Buffett does it. And, you know, if, if you are like that, um, you are an expert in something, there could be a way for you to do it as well. So then fundamental analysis. So again, we look at um, currencies or commodities or stocks or whatever, whatever you trade, you need to have an idea of fundamental value. It's not... I mean, so we'll talk a little bit later about technicals, but if you don't have an idea of, of, of an opinion on the value of something, then how can you know if it's uh, cheap or if it's expensive? So in, 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 uh, when we look at stocks, we have uh, in, in, our, um, in our course, we talk about uh, stocks from five, di five different angles. We look at uh, the geog geography, we look at management, we look at products, we look at finances, we look at the stock market valuation. So if you go through the process, every time you look at a stock, you're going to know a lot. So you want to have a good idea, idea generation, and you want to make sure that it's backed up. Um, also, in, 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 when we look at, at currencies, we look at this uh, fundamental matrix where we look at certain factors that we think um, impact a currency and uh, which we publish within our club as well. And yeah, you, how can you trade a currency if you have no idea about what the fair value is? And again, you can, you can, uh, we'll teach you how to do that. So if we, um, so that's a fundamental analysis. So you have you generate a good idea, you understand a little bit about the uh, fundamentals. So what do you do next? Um, or actually, let's look at the chart. This is quite a good chart to to, to have a look at. Um, this one compares uh, the Aussie dollar versus Chinese inflation. So I look myself at, I probably have about a thousand different charts very similar to this to, to give me an idea if there's a divergence and to give me trading ideas. So here you see the, uh, you see the Aussie dollar in, in uh, white and you see the, the CPI in China in, in yellow. And you see that actually Chinese inflation has come down a lot year on year. So there's a yearly change. And you see the Aussie dollar, which you know, is, is making new lows, could actually go down a lot further. So looking at a chart like this might immediately give you the idea of, uh, yeah, let, let, let's sell some uh, Aussie dollar. Obviously, there's lots of other uh, long checklists before you do that, but this, this might give you an, uh, a trading idea. And here we talked about uh, uh, GDP in Singapore before, and you see here that Singapore GDP is actually negative, and that tells you a lot about uh, China as well. Singapore is like obviously the, uh, almost like the Switzerland of, uh, of Asia, and if, it's, uh, if, if, if that economy starts to deteriorate with negative GDP growth, then you know, that's not good for China, or it means that China is, is, is not exporting as much as, as, as they used to, and that might be negative for the Aussie dollar. So again, that would be supportive of uh, being short Aussie dollars. So then the next thing is, is, is technicals. So you might have, have a great idea, fundamentally it looks good. You need to make sure that you time your entry properly and that you, um, you set your targets and you stop. Always control your risk. So one way of doing it is I always like to show this chart, which is the, it's called the Ichimoku Cloud. It's one which we teach in our technical uh, course. It's uh, invented in, in, in Japan. And let's not go into it uh, right now. Um, but um, basically, you know, it, it, it looks like actually the yen could uh, start uh, climbing further towards the whatever 130 level. Uh, or dropping, whatever you want to call it, um, based, on, based on this chart. And then we look at, uh, obviously, our trading psychology. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe James wants to, do you want to talk a little bit now? You fancy it? You fancy having a, have a, having a go? Well, we're, we're having plenty, seeing plenty of questions coming through, guys. And thank you for uh, 
for sending them our way. We will be running through them, but towards the end, just for the uh, the purposes of time. Um, so do keep them coming, but uh, we will get to them a little bit later. Is there anything interesting? Anything you fancy? There are some good ones. Um, there's one here actually from Lewis for you, uh, who asks, when, he, when it comes to trading FX and your experience, um, do you tend to just focus on the technicals or do you look at, it's quite a popular issue, do you use volume at all in, in FX, which is quite hard to uh, derive, I believe. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, what you what you want to know is 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 how people are positioned, and what you want to know is obviously the volume that that's taking place. But at the end of the day, it is about the price, and that's the ultimate determinant. And you know, that's how you how you you know blow up. So you you ideally look at as many indicate. Well, you look at the number of indicators, and and volume is important. Obviously, in FX, it's quite difficult to get. Uh, what we look at a lot in, in FX is uh, CFTC positioning. So if people are becoming very, very short and the price is not making a new low, then that's a sign of divergence and it might be time to become a contrarian um, and start buying it. But you especially want to do that if you actually fundamentally believe that it's it's totally overdone. And that was the case with the euro a couple of months ago. It was totally overdone, didn't really make a lot of sense. And it was time to bounce and people were way too short. Now, at the moment, people are not as short anymore. Actually, you know, it's, um, they keep on throwing money at Greece. So that's that's maybe not that great either. So Greece staying in might actually be negative for the euro. People are not as short. The euro is breaking down at the moment. So you could easily uh, say, okay, it's, it's, it's time to short the euro. We look at the options market as well, don't we? In yeah, we, we look at the option market. For, uh, okay, and there's a question about do I still talk to Anton from the BBC show? I had lunch with him. Uh, couple of weeks ago uh, he was looking good he was the, the good life was definitely showing uh, he's traveling a lot around the world so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still speaking to Anton um, there's someone says much respect sir thanks very much for that <laughs> there's someone else says can we have a copy of the slides yes you can um, how do we find out fair value of a currency different ways of doing it you can do it purchasing power parity you can use uh, the price of, of, of hamburgers of McDonald's in, in Switzerland and Japan to give you an idea. You can use um, whatever Goldman Sachs things or, or, or JP Morgan, um, but it normally is, um, you know, we, we, we show it, we show in, in, in the trading club where the fair value is based on, on, on the different ways of doing it. But you know what, fair value is, is a long term game. And, you know, the, the, the rule number one in trading is to make sure that you're still around tomorrow. So, if I traded based on the fair value of a currency, uh, I would have a serious, uh, serious problem. Okay, so uh, shall we continue with the uh, trading psychology? Um, so ov obviously, trading is a uh, fight against yourself. You, um, ev everything from from your birth is 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 is, is coming up. If if your mom was nasty against you and you had uh, fits and, you, and you, you, you couldn't control yourself, then anything that reminds you of, your, of someone yeah, telling you off um, or the market uh, saying like, yeah, you're wrong, you, you might not be able to accept it and you know, it, it might kill you in trading. So first of all, you really, really need to understand yourself and it probably takes a lifetime to do it, uh, to really understand yourself. But in, in the meantime, you have to live with yourself. So you need to control yourself. And again, if you go through a five-step trading process and you just tick the boxes, try to be uh, as, 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 as objective as possible, it will be much hard, much easier to deal with the uh, psychology. But obviously, in, in psychology, it's not just about yourself. It's also about the market. And the markets sometimes go absolutely nuts. Uh, look at China again. Uh, we suddenly exploded with, with all the Chinese uh, going out and buying it. You saw like farmers who... Um, who left their farms, left their um, animals, their crop, and thought, actually, you know what, I can make a lot more money very quickly. And some of those obviously made money, but most of them have obviously been carried out in, in, in the last, uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, and here you see that. You see the, uh, the Shanghai. You see how, uh, I mean, for, for years it did absolutely nothing as the rest of the world was, was, uh, was rallying. People in, in China were focusing on property. And now they actually think, well, you know what? The government has said that we will support uh, the market. Everybody knows that they want to, you know, sell lots of state companies. So let, let's just buy it. 
And I had analysts in the office saying about a year ago, I said, like, you just have to buy it. You know, the government's going to support it. You, you need to own it. And yeah, that was like obviously like an absolutely amazing trade. But then at some point it, it becomes parabolic. So when it broke through the 3,500 level, um, you know, it, it, it was unstoppable. It valued another 50% in three months. And then, you know, if you bought it above 5,000, suddenly you're down um, 30%. And if you use leverage, and obviously that's why we always very, very careful uh, using leverage. I mean, I don't, you know, if I use leverage of 200%, you know, that, that's already a lot. Um, because on, on a move of, of, of down 30% and you use twice leverage, you're down 60%. And that's not what you want to do based on trading an, an index which many would say is, is, is manipulated by the government. So then obviously like brings us to, to risk management, which is the fifth step of the process. You can have an amazing original idea. You've done all the fundamental work, so you know you're right. You're going to be right in the long term. You've got an amazing entry point. Psychologically, you're very stable. Everything goes well. Your kids are not screaming at you. Your girlfriend, wife, partner, um, it's very supportive of you sitting behind your trading screen at 7 a.m., um, even even when you're losing money and, and she has to cancel her holiday. Um, so you need to, um, at the, at, no matter how, how well everything is going, you need to um, control your risk, which means deciding beforehand what the maximum is of the loss that you will accept. You need to... Um, Make sure you have a diversified portfolio and that, as I said before, you always need to be around to trade another day. So th those are the five steps and it's the same in currencies and commodities. And if you have the patience to go through these five steps again and again and again, then I guarantee you, and you write this all down in a, in a trading journal, then I can guarantee you that nothing anyone can teach you is going to be better long term for you and for your trading results, um, this, this is going to be the best. Much better than just looking at graphs and following someone else. You know, this copy trading stuff of, you know, it, it, it's crazy. You know, I've, I've, over my 20 years, I've discovered many people who were amazing at some point in time. And you really want to know what they're thinking. But give it a month or six months or a year or two years and they suddenly disappear. You lever the position. You end up losing a lot of money, and you're not quite sure why. So don't don't do it to yourself. Make your own trading decisions. Do your own analysis. Don't copy other people. Don't watch CNBC to find out what what stock someone is pushing. Just just make sure you get the information, the proper information in front of you, and make your decision based on that information. And that's what we're trying to do in the trading club. Make that whole process really, really easy. Give people reports. So we have this weekly report, 12 pages long, lots and lots of numbers. But if, if you read that and you don't come up with four or five trading ideas that are relevant at that time, then, you know, I'd, I'd be very surprised. So here we look at uh, another chart. So, so, so we do backtest. This is a strategy called the uh, turtle soup. You might have heard of the uh, turtle traders. So we, James and I did a, a seminar, webinar uh, in Spain a, a few months ago. And we, because a lot of people say, okay, you, you taught your eight people how to trade. And uh, Richard Dennis taught his people how to trade. And you know, his people made, made a lot of money purely based on, on technicals. Um, so we had a look at it. We had a look at uh, you know, how we can combine our methods with the turtle trading. And also what is shown here is, is turtle soup. And a turtle soup is, uh, is turtle trading is you is momentum trading. You buy whatever, 20 day high and you just go with it. Turtle soup takes uh, advantage of people being turtle traders. And this is taking advantage of, uh, you know, you're in a range. There's a, there's a false breakout and you go against it. So you're making a new high, but it's the next day it's closing. Um, below that, that new high, it's back in the range. Then you sell it on the open of the next day. And that's what's happening here with the uh, the, the, the NOC, the Norwegian Krona. If you had done that over the last, let's say, year, you would have made a 9% return based on this turtle soup. So we backtest it. It works for some currencies, some periods, some, sometimes it doesn't. Um, 
and that's that's uh, yeah that's that's one of the ways we like to look at stuff as well. And we have the abilities within the academy to to do any of that. Obviously, I'm very lucky because I have Bloomberg. I can uh, pull up any chart. I can pull up any tool. Um, and 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 the news that that's going to come out from our side over the next uh, couple of weeks is that uh, through a, a new platform called uh, Tradable, which is going to be taking over from MetaTrader, no doubt. Um, it's, a, it's an app-based trading tool, and what, what you will be able to do there is, is look at my own trading screen. Um, all, all you would need to trade is, 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 is on that platform. I've designed lots of apps myself. I've been very busy with that, and it's, um, it's going to be a very, very powerful. Uh, it's going to be a very powerful tool, and everybody can see what I look at. It will include uh, the fundamental matrix. So you don't need to look at any other website. You don't need to look for the information. It, it will all be there, and it's going to be an incredibly powerful platform. I have apps on there that I've built. Other people have done the same. So that will uh, really help you, and it will, for a lot of people, you know, who are so jealous of, of, of people having Bloomberg, you know, that will pretty much do the same. Okay, now we go into uh, trading psychology. You're probably bored of uh, listening to me for a little bit. James, you want to have a go? Sure, I'll uh, I'll step into the breach, as it were. So um, again, we've seen some uh, some great questions coming through, and we will get through them at some point. So moving on to uh, to psychology in the core of this presentation. Um, first of all, what we're looking at here is the five factor uh, model that was used on the program, and we employ still at the academy to essentially assess the mental toughness or strength. Um, from a psychological standpoint of, um, of, of developing traders and uh, uh, established traders alike. So we're going to run through each of them here uh, on the next slide. Um, so what we're looking at is, first of all, motivation. So the reasons why you are trading, um, what inspired you to come in to start trading, um, and ultimately what helps you to get out of bed every morning and, and want to you know, keep going and hit the markets, particularly when you're tested. So um, that's a, an important thing and something that you should all think about and I'm sure you're, you're well aware of. Um, Self-confidence is the second factor. So what belief do you have in your ability? And it's completely normal to um, endure periods during your trading where you perhaps question that, um, whether openly or you keep it to yourself. Um, but ultimately, you do need to have that self-belief in order to succeed. That's part of the um, mental toughness or the psychological makeup uh, of being a successful trader. The third area we look at is focus. Um, so if, if you have other things on your mind, maybe in your personal life, um, or you're simply not paying attention um, for any reason, then that's going to impede you and impact your results uh, when you are trading and trying to focus on the important information. Um, so that, that's a very important element. Uh, and again, that will wane from time to time uh, with everybody as human beings. It's one thing that the computers do very well uh, versus us. The fourth is composure. Um, and it's something that I think people um, earlier in their careers, especially um, when they're perhaps uh, towards their adolescence coming into the market, as I was uh, not too long ago, um, do find challenging. Uh, but over time with experience does calm. It's one of the things that uh, having worked with Lex for a number of time, I know uh, for a uh, great deal of time, I know he's a very uh, calm and composed uh, under pressure. I've never seen him uh, ever seen him uh, kind of lose uh, lose his cool. Um, and resilience is the final, the fifth and final one. Um, so you will get a number of setbacks and knockbacks when you're trading, whether it's a single loss or a succession of losses, a bad period that you're enduring. Maybe your setups just aren't working, um, or your process is really being tested. That happens from time to time, but it's how you get up and keep going after a, a series of um, things going against you that ultimately um, sees you persevere and the results come good again. Yeah, so for example, on, on the self-confidence, it's important to be self-confident, but you need to back it up by analysis. It's pointless uh, being self-confident and, and really dumb and running into a wall and losing, uh, you know, like trying to, you know, follow conviction that's not uh, backed up. So that's one of the things there. Composure. Uh, James says I have a lot of composure. Well, I, I do hope so. Uh, when I was at Goldman in, in my first year, I was taken uh, into a little room by my manager 
because he said I had done something wrong. And I knew I, I had not, but he thought I had. And he had this pencil and he was pointing it like close to my eyes. And I thought this guy is going to, you know, he's, he's about to kill me. Um, and I didn't cry then. I didn't cry when, you know, I lost a lot of money at different times. So I, I know I, I'm okay. I'm okay on the pressure. And not everybody is obviously like that. I've, I've seen lots of people cry. Um, you know, people ask to come into a meeting and they refuse to go because they could they couldn't deal with it. So it's 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 important to have composure. But again, if you know what you're doing, and you back up your um, your 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 traits with proper research, you know you have more reason to be composed. And also, like if you you also always need to think about okay, what if I am wrong? What am I going to do? And if you have a stop loss in place, then there is no reason to not have uh, composure. It is a question of statistics. You can do all the work. You can still be wrong certain amount of, certain sense of the time, and that's just part of the job. If you if you can't accept statistics, then you really shouldn't uh, you really shouldn't trade. Um, and and again, like if you have a trading plan, then all this stuff will be will be so much easier. So here's uh, Warren uh, Warren Buffett, and he says, uh, "All you need is like all, to have ordinary intelligence, but um, as long as you." Uh, have a temperament to control, um, you know, the urges that get other people into trouble. I think he's talking about fear and greed. So don't don't let yourself be controlled by fear. Don't be scared. Don't be a crybaby, um, and don't be a greedy bastard. Then you know you have a good chance that uh, you know you don't need to make all the money tomorrow. You don't need to have that winning trade that that uh, you know will make you rich. It's it's a long term game. You have to be careful. You have to play according to the the rules. Don't ever do anything illegal. Um, just 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 play safe. Um, and here we look at the uh, eight key skills of successful traders. So it's obviously like a subjective uh, t list. For me, it's really important the ability to listen. A lot of people just absolutely love talking and talking and talking and just can't stop talking, telling everybody how about their life and and if you do as them it's all amazing and talk about you know all the way even to, to lifestyle whatever i i never do that i hate talking about myself i hate um telling everybody okay this is my latest trading idea you know i want to hear what other people are thinking and then i can make my um you know i can make my trading call and i think that's very important you already know what you are thinking yourself obviously it's very important to discuss ideas with people who know more of people have more experience, you know, ask them what they think about a certain situation. Absolutely go for that. But don't tell other people um, all the time what you think and what you're going to do because you already know that. It's just a waste of their time, a waste of your time. Obviously, you need to recognize your mistakes. You, you need to be hungry to learn, resilient, as we talked before. Um, and the analytical ability and numerical skills are totally, um, you know, are important, but they really not as important as the psychological um, perspective. So analytical ability and numerical skills, you know, everybody has a computer, everybody can have an Excel sheet. Um, you don't need to go so deep that you um, need to know absolutely everything about the accounts of the company. Again, there's certain things you need to know and, and we'll teach you what you need to know, but you don't need to have a, sorry, James. You no, sorry, I, was, I was just gonna say, we had a quick question here. Um, where did you get the 75% from? Um, now for the, the keen mathematicians amongst you in this trading room, um, yeah, so it's the six out of eight. It's not an exact science. It was just because six out of the eight are directly related to psychology of the eight factors we have on the uh, on the screen. Yeah, that's yeah, all. That's, that's all there was yeah. to it. And nothing more scientific than that. <laughs> you know, it, it, we struggle it, beyond that. <laughs> if there had been nine, it could have been 78%, but that's, uh, it's, it's just the eight. Yeah. Um, Okay, so why do uh, why do many uh, beginners fail? And funny enough, it's not just be beginners who fail. Well, obviously, it's not just beginners who fail. A lot of experienced people fail as well. And you, every, every couple of months, you read in, in in the paper that another big hedge fund has failed. So everybody fails. And why is it um, they lack a consistent trading process? They take too much risk. They can't take it anymore. And for beginners, you know, twenty percent survives after four years. Um, don't ask me where you get where I get that number from. That's you can't see it on this chart, but that's the number we you know it's an industry number that we hear. 
And obviously one of the reasons is that uh, people just want to do it too quickly. They want to hear the golden rule of trading. And you know what? It takes a very, very long time to be able to understand trading properly. But the great thing is that, you know, if you have talent, you don't have to have gone to university. You know, you can you can work in a shop or you can be a car mechanic. You can be a chef. Any Anyone has the possible, the potential ability to be a great trader. And that's what I love doing about this. It's not about, oh, I want to teach people, students, uh, economic uh, graduates or whatever. Not at all. We like to be able to teach everybody. So there's a few, uh, let's see how we're doing on time. So we, I think we're still okay. So we have, uh, in our course, we talk a lot about common trading mistakes and what you can do about that. One of the big ones is, is obviously over trading. Um, and we're going to go through this quite quickly. So don't worry, we're going to look at some, some interesting charts in a minute. Um, over trading is a huge, huge problem. Probably the, the biggest mistake from everybody. Um, it ends up being gambling. There is no strategy. Some people do it out of boredom. Some other people do it because they need to make money. And if you, if you trade because you need to make money, it's probably the hardest, the hardest way to do it. You know, it's how much do you really, how much capital do you really need to be able to 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 live from your proceeds? And if you look at the professionals, if they make ten or fifteen percent a year, that's a lot. So if you need ten thousand to live on. You know, you would need a hundred thousand capital to to trade with, or you use ten thousand and you leverage it ten times. But if you make a loss of ten percent or more, you're wiped out. So that can't be the idea either. So other reasons are like you might you might be a beginner, you might be very uh, enthusiastic. So that might say, oh, okay, I'll do another one, I'll do another one, I'll do another one. Probably not great either. Um, sometimes it's revenge. You lost a lot of money just now, and you want to make it all back. So those are common reasons uh, for overtrading. You know, what, what are symptoms? Um, trading losses, large commission bill. Probably you're going to end up being very frustrated and it's probably a vicious circle into a disaster. So what can you do about it? Um, follow a plan. If you're bored, walk away. Uh, call a friend. Um, read research. Learn more. And accept that, you know, sometimes the market just doesn't give you the opportunity that you would like to see. So if you do more than one trade a day, you know, that's, that's a lot. You know, I think that uh, especially if, if, if you're a beginner, you know, just take it easy. Take it slowly. See, see what happens. You have, the, you have the rest of your life to trade. I, th I think that's a good point, actually, because we're seeing some questions coming through. And it's a recurring theme. Um, we're seeing when you mentioned the car mechanic and uh, chef analogy earlier, not having to give up your day job. Um, there were a couple of questions which said, "Well, look, presumably once I've started trading and become a bit more uh, successful, not saying that we become rich and we can can afford to quit jobs necessarily, but would we not have to do it full time?" And I think that demonstrates that the reality of trading isn't necessarily a full time or a, a, an all day occupation. For, for, for many people, if you're just trying to manage a portfolio. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the way we, we look at, the way I look at, a tra look at trading is that, okay, you have day traders who sit there and they buy and they sell intraday and they look at the news and they quickly, um, they quickly enter trade. There's lots of computers these days that look at the information coming out, the news coming out, and they do it a lot quicker than any human can do. So it is really that's a really really difficult way to um, to trade, but if you have again if you have the right process and you have the right way of looking at things and the right way of analyzing stuff, and uh, for example you see yeah okay Tesco it's not going as well anymore and everybody's shopping at Aldi. If you start seeing that and you start analyzing the underlying business, um, then shorting Tesco is not a decision that you need to make intraday. You need to do proper work before that. And then you look at, okay, what's a good level to short it? And you say, okay, below that, I'm going to short it. And if it goes below, above a certain level, that's where my stop is. You know, you can do whatever you want. And it's, it's, it's going to be good to, to, to walk away from the screen. So you can then build a portfolio, portfolio of ideas. And then sometimes one makes money and the other one loses money. Okay, that's fine. But at least you have something to make up for it. So if you, 
if every trade has to be a winner, um, you know, you, you're going to be uh, your, your career as a trader is going to be very short. But there are plenty of ways for people not to, um, to to have a job and to combine it with what we do. That's that's exactly what we're set up to do. That's how we want people to trade. Almost like okay, I don't want to, I don't want you to be a full time trader um, when you start. Maybe you turn out to be extremely talented and you have amazing ability and you are special. But then maybe you should give up your job. But don't do it till you actually go through this, uh, go through the education. And again, like the, the the way we educate is is meant to is 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 is, is very um, specific to each individual. So it is not oh this is how you have to do everything. It's 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 making sure that people's strength come out, that people's ability comes out, and that people's own psyche comes out. So you have you you develop your own style. I want people to develop their own style. I don't want people to copy me. I don't want people to learn little tricks saying okay. You know the ISM is at this level, so now you need to do that. You know that's a that's a crazy way of 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 trading. That's just not how money is being made. Tons and tons of money is being lost following those little rules because sometimes they work and sometimes they do not work. So we teach a framework and we teach like many many different ways of of analyzing situations and we show what works when and how to adapt. So we're not trying to create one trick ponies. We're trying to create, I mean, I, I wouldn't say even a racehorse. We just try to make sure that, you know, people have a chance of actually making money. And when they lose money, they've actually learned something about themselves and about the process they're going through, as opposed to, oh, whatever I was listening to was wrong and I shouldn't have done that. And guess which guys are making the money, taking advantage of not trading in the same way. It's the guys who have got the perspective, who have got the experience and a different approach, not the guys following signals or following the rules. Yeah, I mean, for me, like exactly. the turtle soup, what I said is like fading, fading the move because everybody jumps on it and all the copy traders are suddenly sort of like shorting the euro and you know it's wrong and it doesn't make sense anymore and it's like the theme has, has gone. And we, we start to see on our side that, yeah, positioning is too extreme. The... Um, you know, the economic data coming out actually is not much worse. We understand the Greece situation, et cetera. You know, that makes it makes it just so much more fun. So for, for, for us, it's also like an intellectual game. It's about we want to beat the market, and the market's going to be around forever, and it's not easy to beat the market. So it's, it's, it's the hardest game in the world. It's, it's playing chess against whatever, millions of very, very smart people, and they change all the time. So that's, that's the fun of it. That, that's why I'm doing it. And the same with, with, with educating, um, it's very challenging, you know, because a lot of people don't understand why they should be educated because they think it's okay, well, you know, look at the chart um, and they're being educated wrong. So that's that's how we look at it. So let's look at some charts because we're starting to run out of time. I'm clearly talking too much. Um, so um, this is we, so we do a uh, also like a quarterly club report where we look at some very interesting uh, charts. And we look at some some uh, some some strategies, sharing some strategies. Uh, this 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 one is uh, is is because we're talking about psychology. Um, for every every one of the five steps, we have we probably in total like share about uh, in 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 this report we do in a uh, for our platinum club members it's over 100 charts that we that we share every every quarter and that we explain what's going on in the market. So here you see in the top top uh, box you see the S and P ticking up and up and up. Obviously in 2009 it was 666, and now we're above uh, you know above 2100, uh, close to making new highs. And below you see um, sentiment from uh, from retail traders, and you can see whenever sentiment is um, is low, it's 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 time to buy. So that's what we get from this one. And if you've done that, every time the sentiment number came out below 24, you see in this uh, S&P gain per annum box that you would have made 26% per year. It's only 15% of the time. But it shows that whenever retail traders have been negative based on, on this report, it's time to buy. So that's a really, really useful uh, report to have. So that's what we make accessible to, to whoever um, joins our club. So then another one a lot of people look at is, is the VIX. And you see here again, if, if, if the VIX is high, uh, so the volatility of, of stocks in the S&P is high, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's time to buy. And that strategy, again, 15% of the time, 
would have made you 40%. So it, it doesn't necessarily need to be that difficult. You know, so psychology, if other people are f fearful, you really should consider buying. Not always, can still go down a lot, but if you had done it over this period, over the last 18 years, this is what you would have made. So this is it, it's part of your strategy. If you've done your research, you've done your preparation, you have a view fundamentally on the market or on the particular asset you're looking at, and you've worked out whether or not it would be a fit within your portfolio, you've gone through all the steps and sentiment or positioning as one element. When you see that opportunity, that's when you take it versus perhaps when you let it walk. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's about that preparation. So here, you, you want to explain this chart? Yeah, so um, this is an example of extremes in positioning. So Lex mentioned earlier that one of the things that we look at in the currency markets and also the commodities markets and feature within the reports that we produce um, are the futures positioning uh, from the CFTC, essentially the Futures Commission uh, in the States. Now, what you can see here, we've manually uh, overlaid uh, the upper red and lower green lines just to indicate um, an arbitrary extreme level um, when essentially people in the futures market and specifically referring to what they call or define as large speculators, in other words, hedge funds and very, very large traders, when they were uh, net long above zero or net short and expecting prices to uh, decline uh, below zero. So what you can see is often when positioning reaches an extreme, then you could consider the trade to be what we call crowded. So in other words, there's been something of a herding effect, to use the, uh, the psychology term. Um, so in other words, if everybody's already long, how many buyers remain? How many new buyers remain to step in and take prices higher? And what you can see, uh, same as uh, contrary is true for, uh, for, for shorting as well. Um, and you can see that essentially the exhaustion points on this chart, which was a good example, albeit taken last year, of the Aussie dollar, which is now lower. Um, you can see that as it approached extremes, uh, it ran out of steam temporarily. So um, participants wanted to take a pause. And this is what we'll focus on uh, with some current examples over the next couple of slides. Yeah, so that's what we're going to look at. I don't know if there's any questions in between that's, that's worth uh, having a quick uh well, they're all worth going through, Lex, but I think we should... Sorry, that, 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 sorry I should say, <laughs> every question is worth um, being there, but yeah. not every question might be worth answering in front of, like, this many people. We, we've, it, we've got probably 50 or 60 questions to get okay, through, fine. so we'll, we'll try okay. and the best. So, the so we're going to speed up a little bit. So another one we look at is, is uh, what's called a risk reversal, and what that means is, um, you know, the price in the option market, this is in this case the Aussie dollar, um, the price of calls, call options, where you say it's going up, versus the price of put options, where you say it's going down. So if it's below um, zero, it means that people, uh, you know, buying puts, they're worried about the downside. And again, this is one of those ways where you can say, okay, everybody's getting, you know, everybody's bearish at a certain position at a certain time. Everybody's short, everybody's buying puts, you know, it's, it's, it's had its fall. And here, what's going to be interesting, what's interesting is actually, you know what, there's, there's not as many put buys as you would expect. So the Aussie dollar could could continue to drop. What, one comment here, Lex, uh, just to be seeing coming through the questions, was that um, pointing out that fundamentals played uh, a lot or were relevant in some of these currencies, explaining some of the moves. And that's absolutely true. And it's not to say, it's certainly not saying disregard fundamentals and all the rest and only look at this. This is just one part and one thing that we focus in on to help us gauge the sentiment of the market and the timing of our trade. No, but that, that, so, so what you're looking but for that definitely... The positioning often. Yeah, so, so what, you, what you definitely want is like have a view on, on, on the currency and then you're waiting for everybody to be going the other way, massively positioned, wrong, and then waiting for the tech... Because, you know, obviously like the, the market can move a long way away from where it fundamentally should be. So you're waiting for everybody to go the wrong way and then... You know, you go against that. Ideally, when a technical point has happened, when the position is extreme, and then you go into it. So you already know your fundamentals. So you're not going to go with the um, what other people are doing based on their positioning. You just use it for yourself. So here, like uh, James, James has uh, you know generated an example based on on this weekly report that we show, and we show this for currencies, we show it for commodities, we show it for for, for equities. 
So it's a very, very interesting report. Maybe you want to quickly explain what's yeah, going we, on here? Yeah, we will make this one brief um, just so we can we can continue through and answer some questions at the end. Uh, but what we identified here last week in uh, last Wednesday's positioning report when it was produced uh, was that we're looking at, for example, dollar, Swiss, franc, which we have highlighted in red, um, towards the extreme of the range when it comes to positioning. So in other words, that's towards extremely long dollars versus the Swiss francs. So in other words, there is a lot of negativity around the Swiss franc, which, given the uh, the the rate cut today, has actually proved to uh, to be right. Um, so in this case, it's uh, it's warranted. Uh, however, going back last week, retrospectively, uh, you wouldn't necessarily have known at the time. Um, also, another highlight, as you can see, was the positioning in the New Zealand dollar, this time traded against the US dollar, uh, was extremely short. And in terms of price, at the price range at the bottom, you could see that it was also um, at the lowest level it's been in the last year. And again, this is one which hasn't necessarily, uh, it's held up over the last few days, but today uh, has actually played out correctly. We're seeing fresh lows in the New Zealand dollar. Um, we're seeing the Canadian dollar also get crushed. Uh, relative to uh, to the US dollar, if you trade in the US uh, from the long side. Um, so in this case, it's idea generation, but something that hasn't necessarily worked out. So it's something to keep on the watch list. As you can see here from the, uh, the chart, which was taken admittedly earlier in the week. So keeping on the theme of extreme positioning, uh, this is another idea which was generated from the same report you can see last Wednesday uh, in the top right hand corner. Um, this time focusing on commodities which are, well, continue to endure a very, very uh, difficult and testing period. They're in an absolute bear market. There's no doubt in that, approaching the 2009 lows. And within certain categories, um, they're, uh, they're performing even worse, largely driven by energy. Um, but one of the, the pockets of uh, positivity, uh, if you'd like to uh, use that expression, is, uh, is in the agricultural uh, sub-index. Um, and we're seeing movements actually today uh, in the latest report, the so updated version of this, uh, we've seen even greater outperformance and also long uh, positioning in the futures reports for the agricultural commodities. Wheat has also stepped up. Um, but the idea here is that rather than, uh, and again, coming back to context and how we interpret this information, uh, which is what we teach, rather than trading this from a contrarian um, perspective or contrarian angle, we actually saw that soybeans were within quite a tight trading range, but towards the lows of the 52-week um, trading range. However, the market, large speculators, the professionals, had suddenly got extremely long um, and long as they've been in a year. So for this reason, and given the price action, we actually looked at soybeans as a potential long, so a potential turning point um, in, uh, in the trend, in the longer-term trend, as opposed to a really short-term move. So there are times to fade it and be contrarian. Based on the same information, there are also times to um, follow the smart money, as it were. But with th this sort of perspective, you gain through the courses and through ultimately learning. And you can paper trade, you can test your ideas with a smaller size to begin with and get some of that feedback from the markets and from your trading results as you go along. So we're, we're here to support you with that. As you can see uh, here, we've, we have the uh, chart over the last couple of years uh, for soybeans. Can see the consolidation it's been making for the last year and we've now broken up uh, out of that range and we're testing uh, new highs so it's something to keep an eye on that we're watching here but as you see a lot uh, there's a lot more going into this than just looking at the chart and saying oh actually you know what I, sh I should buy that so that that to me has always been the most bizarre thing that people only that people are able to make decisions purely based on, on charts because it's kind of boring you don't know what you're really looking at and it's looking at the clouds and, and sort of saying, oh, it's going to flow that direction. Uh, might, you know, if you make lots of money doing it, good luck to you. Um, but I wouldn't put my money on, on, on purely based on that. There's, there's a lot more to it. Um, so how should trading be? Um, relaxed, in control, calm, energized, positive, focused, confident, effortless. That's how it should be. You know, that's the million dollar mindset. How often am I in that space? Um, well, I can tell you one thing. When I'm not in that space, and I know I'm not in that space, I really, really shouldn't trade. I should trade when I feel like this. So it's not a question of, of, of you obviously, you want to be in this space as, as, as much as possible. It's obviously a positive thing. But if you, if you don't feel like any of those, then you have, then you have an issue. 
And again, within the, the tradable environment, as, as I explained, uh, we're developing all these apps for, we have a trading journal. And part of the trading journal talks about your psychological state of mind. You will write down as you trade or when you trade how you feel yourself. Do you feel positive or don't you feel positive? So if you make, if you, if you track the emotional state, um, again, you, you will learn about yourself. And if you, if, 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 if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to be honest with yourself, if you don't want to learn, well, then obviously education is not really for you. But here, this is like how we teach best methods, um, and, and this is part of that. It's like if you want to be an athlete, right, but you don't put the work in, or you cook corners in the gym, or in your diet, you're not going to get the same results. Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, uh, to conclude what, what we're talking about here, and then, and then we'll go into Q&A, um, we have, uh, you can look on our website, we have 50 plus uh, videos uh, talking about stocks and currencies and commodities. And some people like try to offer it separately uh, or not at all. But to me, I can't trade one without the other. You know, what happens in the FX markets helps me with looking at stocks. You know, I can't trade the Nikkei without going, knowing what's going on in the yen. You know, I need to know everything. I need to know, I can't trade the Aussie dollar without knowing what's going on in, in, in iron ore, et cetera, et cetera. So we provide 50 plus videos that I've written over the last five years, taking me an enormous amount of effort enormous amount of time there's an enormous amount of knowledge in there uh, we've built spreadsheet models to make your life easier we continuously come back with uh, world case studies um, and if you want you can have uh, you know do an exam and have a certificate um, and then we have the trading club so what we um, what we have today as a special offer is uh, if, you, if you take out the uh, the, the lifetime access you're going to get uh, the free gold trading club uh, the, the gold trading club for free which is worth a thousand dollars lifetime course right yeah so if you do the lifetime course which is which is uh, which we haven't done before normally we don't uh, you know don't like trying to to persuade people by special offers but because this is our first uh, the first big webinar that we're doing um i thought it makes sense to, to to incentivize people a little bit or to to say thank you for for, for listening for still being here and funny enough only t we've only lost two percent of the people who uh who signed up initially so to thanks everybody for, for listening to this for an hour and so let's any any more questions that you uh that you have here that's that that we have a look at so we now have uh 40 seconds for questions i'm kidding we can uh, we can never run past eight o'clock uh in line with uh, with many many requests to do so so why don't we why don't we allow five ten minutes or so at least to uh, to run through some of these this is quite nice um someone says keep going so <laughs> okay that's we're gonna keep going so it says, thank you for your time. Yeah. So then, then someone else says, sorry for asking this, but why is Lex Van Dam selling his trading secret? That's actually a really good question because everybody says, okay, but there's the, the secret to trading. And, uh, you know, if you know that, you know, uh, why sell it to anyone? But there's obviously a lot of people who say they have a secret and then they, they sell it. And obviously it's not worth anything. Um, but here it, it is the, the, the key is, and it was the same with the, the turtle traders, the key is to follow the process. So the key is that's the secret. Just follow, know yourself, do the work, and you will probably, if you have talent, be successful. So that's that's the secret. So if if I'm very happy to share that with other people, and I want everybody to be as good a trader as they can be. Um, but there is no secret. If you believe there's a secret to trading, um, then you are mistaken. So I don't have the secret to trading. I have a methodology. Which, I've, which has worked for me for the last 22 years. So I'm happy to share that. Um, well, do you enjoy trading? Well, for me, I just love trade. Like, I, I love different experiences in life. So I love trading different instruments. So I want to be able to say, okay, you know, I've, I've, I've traded whatever, like I've traded oil on, 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 on the floor. So, you know, I did that for a little bit in, 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 the, in the 90s. And, you know, from my desk calling, uh, the floor broke and it was like a really smart guy. And it's like, he said, okay, maybe this is a good idea. I said, yeah, that's probably a good idea. And then there was an OPEC headline. And then, you know, obviously totally, uh, totally didn't work out, et cetera. But I felt, okay, well, I've traded oil now, you know? So I think it, the fun is to actually trade different things. So again, when you trade currencies, you suddenly have to look at lots of different countries. 
and you can analyze these countries and it's not that difficult but you know you can you can trade the rupee super interesting what's going on in india so i just love trading different instruments and i find that the more different in, i've traded you know credit default swaps whatever i've done i've, I've done it all um and it's just super exciting because you learn something new and you put your money where your mouth is you know and you and you're always fighting against really really clever people who probably know more than you and you still go into that arena and every time yeah you, you risk your money and you hope um that that the work you've done and the risk management that, that you have in place will will still allow you to be there the next day well that that's another thing that we're seeing here like you mentioned putting money where your mouth is and backing your ideas of course you did that with the program but something we are being asked um in, amongst people uh here today is how much money do you need to really start trading? I guess it's quite difficult to put a figure on it, but um, maybe you can. Well, you can have a uh, obviously you can have a dummy trading account. If you have no money, you can see it as a you know as a fun thing, an intellectual thing to do um, and get better. And then maybe one day you will have that money to trade with. So you don't even yeah you don't need money. Um, if, if if you want to make money, um, then obviously you know it, it, it's going to be totally. Uh, you know, correlated to the amount of money you put in. But whatever money you put in, even if you put in a hundred pounds or, or, or a few hundred quid, you should not increase your size to make up for your lack of, of, of money because you will not learn. You will end up just gambling it and you might as well go to casino. So whatever, it doesn't matter how much money you have, play carefully. I get emails all the time from people saying, oh, I made 300% and I made this and I made that. And they go straight into in, 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 into the into the bin because you know it is not impressive if you make two hundred percent. It's impressive if you can make ten percent consistently. That is impressive, and if you're able to write down why you do those trades, and when those trading are, when the trades are based on your own ideas and not copying someone else. We have uh, we have a question here from uh, from Farouk, uh, Farouk Rahman, one of our students. Hi Farouk, uh, thank you for uh, for attending <laughs> whilst learning with us. Um, quick uh, quick question here: um, How do you identify a good short in a strong economy? Now it's been a long time, I think, since we've been sat in a strong economy, but um, we can but dream. How how do you identify good shorts in a strong economy? Well, for example, at the moment, what what's interesting is obviously uh, disruptive technology. So there's a lot of old fashioned. Um, strong business models are being, um, you know, are, are being destroyed. So if I am, um, you know, if, if, if you look at Uber, um, new technology, everybody using, using the app, then there will be companies that are going to get destroyed by these guys. So if you're whatever listed, a, a listed uh, taxi company, you know, you're going to get, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to suffer. And it's the same for, um, I mean, and we mentioned it in the um, we met, we, again. We, we talk about this in the in the club all the time. So there there, there are certain situations. Um, another way to look at it is okay, what is performing badly? You know, where where are the losses taking place at the moment? Uh, which stocks are doing well and which stocks are not doing well? So obviously, Amazon is doing really well in this in in this strong economy in well in 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 this economy, but General Motors is not. So you could look at uh, okay, I'm going long uh, Amazon. I'm going short. Um, I'm going short General Motors. Other interesting uh, divergence, obviously, is the uh, the Dow and S and P are making close to making new highs, but the transports are not. So to to start looking into those areas. So if you you can do it based on price action, so you can do it um, what is not doing well. So that those are short candidates. It can be based on the Aldi Tesco example where. You know, someone is, is, is not doing their business correctly, someone, uh, and it's based on disruptive technologies. And then there's another 10 different ways of doing it. So I hope that kind of helps. We, we've got another good one here. It's uh, maybe something that we could frame around the process. It's, it's quite a, an expansive question. Um, but what do you see as the biggest risk that's not currently priced in to the market? I guess there are so many different markets you can take the pick. Well, a big I mean, there's obviously like there's, there's liquidity risk because, you know, banks are not providing the same liquidity. Um, everybody goes into the same ETF. 
So there's a risk that uh, if things go wrong, then everybody's positioned the same way. So interest rates are zero. Uh, everybody's in stocks. Everybody's uh, leveraged long stocks. So there's, there's obviously huge risks in this market if the governments are no longer able to support it. But you know what? Um, I mean, my view is that, that um, you know, those risks are definitely there, but they're almost unhedgeable. So you need to make sure that you have stops in place and say, OK, actually, you know what? If the S&P starts trading below um, 2000, you know, I don't want to be long uh, the stock market anymore. or I don't want to be long U.S. stocks anymore. That's that's a good point. Linked to that, we're being asked again uh, by a few of you, um, how how within the course, how do we determine ultimately how much you, you put on a particular trade or a particular position? Well, I think that for, that for people, um, you know, professionals, you know, if, if you do a bad trade and, and, and you lose 1% of your money, you know, that's already a lot. So I think that, you know, you wouldn't, in general, you don't want to risk or lose more than 1% or 2% of your money. And that's obviously like if you have a small account, that's, uh, that's, that's really, really hard to do. So you could say, okay, I'm going to do a little bit higher than that, or maybe like 3% or 4%. But if you start risking 10% per trade, I mean, chances are that you're going to have 10 wrong trades in, 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 in a row and you lose all your money. And that you definitely don't want to do. So the less you risk, the better. So and especially when you're starting, um, or maybe especially when you've done it for a long time. When, you, when you've done it for a long time, you don't want to lose it all by going through a bad period. And when you start, you don't want to give up. Um, like a p possible uh, really good trading career by, by risking too much for each trade. Sure. Um, and we are having uh, a couple of questions related to the, the course in the club, and I assure you this isn't a, uh, a false plug. Um, just to, to very quickly answer Lucas specifically who asked this, um, he asked whether I believe the gold trading club access was, uh, does it mean lifetime access? The, the course is available on a one month or a lifetime basis in terms of how long you have access. But the trading club is a subscription, so it's a 12 month access for the price you see. So just to clarify that. And there's 10 webinars, so every month, except um, the summer months, um, there, there is a um, discussion about, uh, about current markets and you get the weekly trading report as well. And we, we'll dig much deeper into into actually what's going on. So it's not going to be every time a conversation about psychology of trading. It's going to be actually about, uh, you know, what's going on in the markets right now, what's being discussed in the, uh, in the weekly report, um, you know, what's going on. So check um, if you want to have a look at the upcoming uh, webinars, which I'd encourage you to do and other events, um, on our website, lexvandam.com, in the events section, you'll see um, a schedule of what's coming up. Our next will be a week on Wednesday. Um, where we'll be looking at, uh, I believe we're going to be looking at either uranium or possibly uh, lithium plays uh, using fundamental, or using uh, the idea generation step for uh, for generating some good stock ideas in those areas. It'll be David who's uh, running through that. Okay, so it, I mean, it's really great to see all, all these questions. So it's, like it's going to be impossible to go through it. Um, and, and yeah, please... Uh, I mean, a lot of people are being really nice. What is it like to be a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You know, tell us. <laughs> so, someone says Russia. Um, what are your views about the casino Shanghai market? Very difficult to play uh, in the, in the, or to trade in a market that's manipulated by the government. But you know what? If, if they're really committed to buying this, then maybe it's not that different from the Greenspan uh, put. So maybe if, if Shanghai goes down a little bit more, then probably it is uh, actually an amazing uh, buy. So then someone says, uh, well, why is this course different from Anton's course? Um, obviously, an uh, ex-colleague of mine who uh, I asked to help me with the uh, Million Dollar Traders program. Why is it different? Um, you know, I'm, I'm still trading. I'm a hedge fund manager. It's very different being a hedge fund manager than, than trading for at a bank, for a bank. You know, I put every day my... Uh, my own money at, at, at risk in, 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 in high size and I do the same for clients. So that's a very different uh, background. So I have to, I'm, I'm, I'm forced to look at, at what's going on in the markets right now. So that's, uh, that's, that's what I do. And, you know, other, other, I don't think there's many other educators who do the same. 
we've got time for a couple more questions. Um, but there's a very, I think one more. There's a very good one that's come through here. Oh, really? Right? Do you like tequila? Do you like tequila? Well, I, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't mind a drink, I guess. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, pre- I'm pretty boring. You know, I, w- I wouldn't, uh, I don't like running around being drunk. So one or two is probably okay. Uh, and when everybody is short, should I be buying? Well, if if you actually bullish, if you actually bullish on, on on whatever it is that you're trading, and everybody else is short, yes, you you should be buying. Um, then let's just see uh, what else do we have. Okay, I, th- I think that, I mean there's so many other questions from all over the world, from from India, Japan, etc. So uh, I, I just want to say thank you all for 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 listening in, for for staying uh, with it for 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 so long. Um, please email me uh, questions directly, and 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 I will uh, I will try to answer them. So I hope to uh, I hope for some of you to to join me at the academy and for other people I hope to see you again at at one of my events or at, at another webinar. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, everybody.